everybody. Um, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you very much for the invitation to speak at the conference. It's a really uh, great honour and it's my first visit to India and I'm really enjoying being in India. It's a really remarkable place and Pune is a really um, beautiful and interesting city for me. Um, in Australia, it's a custom for us to acknowledge the traditional owners of our land, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, um, and pay respects to their elders past and present. And in this spirit, I, I would like to um, pay my respects to the people of India, to the people of the state of Maharashtra, and specifically to the people uh, of Pune, to which I'm a visitor. Thank you. The comfort and aesthetics. Um, it's inevitably rooted in context, com comfort and aesthetics. Um, it's, it's essentially what gives our, uh, our lives place and perspective in this world is what helps us understand what comfort, comfort, comfort and aesthetics are to us. I'm privileged to come from a place that is relatively low density, of high wealth and has high personal freedom. It's a place that is home to one of the oldest races on the planet and yet, horrifically, it's a place where we have systematically wiped out one of the most, wiped out the history and context of the people of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islands. Comfort and aesthetics are really um, placed in the context by both individual and collective um, considerations, considerations which are built on and around and determined by economics, politics, society, education and health. Um, there are sensibly wealthy pursuits because they're toils that are r rarely entered into the consciousness of the poor and underprivileged. They instead are caught up in decisions regarding survival. Compass and aesthetics are useless, really, considerations if one's life is consumed simply by collecting enough food and water. I, I, I talk about that because um, I have to think about that in the relation to my, my practice because my practice is split between doing work for um, some Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in the north of the country who are um, some of the poorest people in our country um, and live well below the poverty line um, and equally doing work for some of the richest people in my country who are spending hundreds, uh, tens of millions of dollars on houses on Sydney Harbour. I'm lucky enough to live um, in this place. Um, this is a photo that I took flying into Sydney, just coming back from um, Melbourne, my home state. Um, it is a rem remarkably beautiful place. It's um, full of geography and the, c and the city is really hugging around this um, harbour, this beautiful harbour. And the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge are really very central to everybody's um, understanding of the city. Um, and the geography of the city is incredibly diverse. Um, we're lucky enough to have a really impressive body of contemporary artists in our cities. Um, this one by Grace Cossington Smith in the 20s, um, just looking at the construction of the Opera House. Um, the Opera House is kind of this, this very, very conscious part of our city in the way in which we make buildings. Um, these incredibly beautiful drawings built by the first female architect in our country, Marion Marnie, who was the wife of Walter Billy Griffin, who was uh, educated by Frank Lloyd Wright um, and was the architect and urban designer of our national capital, Canberra. Uh, and more recently, Brett Whiteley, um, uh, these really evocative draw, um, paintings of Sydney Harbour, the kind of presence that it has, the kind of centre of the city and just the kind of way in which it, it changes um, over time. I think it's always interesting, though, to look at where we've come from, and I, just, I, I really love this image because it places Australia very, very close to India. <laughs> we're, we're much closer historically than perhaps we are today. Um, but I like this kind of understanding of the world and the fact that um, Australia is always seen at the bottom of the world, but that's kind of a, con um, a constructed con um, position because there's no up or upside or wrong side to the, to the world. So if we place Australia on the top, it's kind of nice to think about us being up here as opposed to always being down here. 